She's a heck of a lot of fun, Jeannie Robertson. Oh, she's a heck of a lot of fun, Jeannie Robertson. Is it time? It is time. Minutes, one minute, 20 seconds. Where's my note pad? And then here we are. Hey, everybody. It's Jeannie Robinson. Where's the camera, Patrick? All right, right up there. Uh, we never know. So this is an exciting day here. And thank you for joining me on the back porch in North Carolina, where if we look through, now you people in the Northeast are going to burst out laughing, but if we look through our windows right now, we see a dusting of snow. However, during the night, it was icy and snowy and bad. And therefore, our special guest for the day, Karen Mills, who was driving from Chattanooga, uh, we just let cooler heads all prevail. And she's going to come in a few weeks. And we will announce that at later. Karen, if you're listening, we miss you. But she could have zoomed in, but we had planned to go to dinner last night with the crowd, Tony and Patrick. Not a big crowd, but a crowd, Patrick. And that lets our that lets us have the exact number we can get in this restaurant and sit far apart. So um, she's going to come in a few weeks, and so we're going to go on without her. But we appreciate that, Karen. Next week, we already have scheduled Jane Jenkins Herlong from South Carolina. Jane was in the Miss America pageant. She was Miss South Carolina. I don't know why girls enter those pageants, but she wanted to, and she did. <laughs> of course, I'm saying that jokingly because I was Miss North Carolina in the Miss America pageant probably before Jane was born, but about 10, <laughs> 10 or 15 years before. I don't know. I, not, what? That, not that bad. <laughs> no, that's Tony over there. I'm on the porch with about Jane's. 10, Jane's old. Jane's old. Well, what does that make me? I love me? Jane. I love it Jane. makes me be alive. So we look, and then it two makes, weeks. It makes two, us old enough to get the first round of vaccines. That's right. We we're, we're, we're vaccine ready over here. So then um, we've got a, another weekend planned. We, we think we're going to go up in the closet. Y'all have been requesting that we go up into this closet that I built on. And then after that, we have Shonda Pierce coming. This is all this month. And she is drop dead funny and y'all are excited. Thank you for sending me names and suggestions of people to have on the show. If you ever know any of them personally and can introduce me, they might not know who I am. But we got some great ideas and I, I appreciate that so much. Um, a couple of things we're going to do today. We will have a, three show and tales and uh, we'll do those sometime. We don't have time. And we the when New Year's came, we threw out all the bags of the absolute thousands of people who had entered for prizes. And uh, we started over. So last week when I was in Nashville for the Grand Ole Opry, I had live, not from Jeannie's back porch, but from the Nashville people's living room because it was too cool there to go out on their deck. And we started over. And you had a lot better odds of winning prizes and you had better odds of getting your question asked. And then you get thrown into the prize box too, to, to for an entry out. So we, we think we've got it. And I want to start off today with um, some show and tales. About six weeks ago, I wore this shirt on my pop-up during the week. For those who don't know, I do a pop-up just usually on Thursday before Friday. That's the way it always comes, Thursday, Friday. Before we start having the show, uh, I'm on a radio show in the mornings, and I'll tell you about that. And uh, But I wore this shirt. We don't come up here on the porch. I'm doing this from my messy office downstairs. And y'all really liked this shirt. And I thought, I've never had shown it for the big group, and so I'll tell you about it. I think it's a show and tell, and I'll show you why. Do you see, Patrick, can you zoom in closer? This, you can't or can could you walk over here with the camera? <laughs> no. But what, okay. So what we have here, that's good. This is a moon. And this is supposed to be a river. And when I was at the Moon River, Andy Williams Moon River Theater in Branson for a show, 
they left me this shirt and then you can see there are rhinestones everywhere and around the neck and around and it's not a t-shirty material it's a nice shirt and i loved it and happened to have with me on that for that show um some rhinestone earrings bracelets a big pin y'all have all seen it i've worn it for years and i thought you know what i think i will wear i wear this shirt with the black slacks i've got and turned out i didn't realize it but all of the ushers wear these shirts 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 to wear these shirts too and so i don't think they sold out after the show but they sold a bunch of these shirts and i just love it i put on my rhinestone earrings I had on my wine stone bracelets, some of which, of course, are magnetic bracelets, and you know where I got them. Are wine stones anything like wine rhinestones? Stones. Did I say? <laughs> did I say wine stones? After you drink wine, they become wine stones. <laughs> but but I'm not drinking wine. I thought this I heard that. I'm what sorry. are y'all doing? I'm, I'm not drinking any that. wine. It is noon. We're not doing that. It's five o'clock somewhere. Let me explain to you. That's Patrick Henry, who's producing the show, as y'all know. We are two professional speakers who looked at each other last March in our little town in North Carolina and said, what are we going to do? All of my shows have been postponed and Patrick, all of your conventions have been either canceled for this year or postponed. So here we are working. We are not into the wine, but you know what? The way this shows works out sometime, maybe that wouldn't be a bad. There's Gypsy Tweed looking superb in your bling. Thank you. I just think this is a great shirt. And uh, the fact that it's really a night, I showed it to Jane Tucker thinking, what is she going to say? And her first things were, that's fabulous. What a great shirt. Oh, and you look, you're wearing my mother's earrings with it. And I said, yes, I am. Do you have any more? Because her mother had a lot of these pairs. So that's one of my show and tells. I wanted to show you all that today and make sure you could see the moon river. If I could sing, I might have had a chance of being Miss America. So see there, I'll just do the best I can. The second thing, this is also a show and tell. I've had this here for several weeks, not last week, of course, because I wasn't here. And people have started asking about it. It's an American flag and it's carved on a piece of wood. And I was watching television last year. Patrick, can you come pick this thing up? I want to make sure that I tell you the young man's name and it's on the back. He signed this to Jerry and Jeannie Robertson, who love this country. And his name, I got number 101 out of all the ones he did. And his name is, um, let me make sure, Lorenzo Liberti. And, and it's solid wood. And what he did was, I'm not selling things, don't Do you think. think Liberty may be a made-up name for an artist of patriotic stuff? No, I think it's his name. Okay. It's spelled with an I, Lorenzo Liberti. Okay, put it down. He's carved little swatches out, yeah. Anyway, you can put it back here. Beaver came through, saw it, and said, as he does way too many times, Mom, don't give that away. I want that. Well, yeah, I just bought it. But he's given the money to wounded, excuse me, to homeless veterans. And then he also, some of it has gone to help uh, uh, first responders at hospital. He's trying to put one, I think, in the hospital. So I thought he was a very polite teenager. He had come up with the idea. He knows exactly how many hours it takes him to make one of these uh, flags. And I realize so many people are not from our country, but I'm hoping you feel the same way about your flag that we feel, a lot of us, about our flag. And uh, so then he had to hire other people in his shop classes and he's got his buddies working and everything. So this was in June, I think. And I thought, he is so polite. And yes, ma'am, yes, sir, answering the questions of the commentators. I just slapped down my credit card and bought one, thinking I'm going to be one of the ones that this is a good idea, thinking I was in the minority because. And then it said, I got a letter that said, yours will be delivered in December. <laughs> that was last summer. So it came and I started putting it up. So that's my second show and tell. And my third show and tell is something I've had out here and I haven't been, hadn't, couldn't work it in. And this is a great day for it. This is a letter I just got from a man in Alamance County, North Carolina named Tim Green. He found writing a book that his daddy had written and it was um, Say Goodbye at the Corner or turn right, say goodbye at the corner. And he 
took that book to fruition. Um, like a lot of people, he his daddy went to um, went to work in the mills here when he was like fourteen, and he thought he was going in to work for the summer. And his mother would go to the corner, walk him, and then wave goodbye. And the whole thing is that there are a lot of people whose lives are not planned exactly like they think. Um, but this was a talented man. And although he wound up working in the mills a long time, he uh, wrote this book and his son found it and he put it out. So he last year before last on um, Memorial Day weekend, I was going through my messy office and I found a letter from him that said, would you read this book and put a quote in the book if you enjoy it? It was a little book and I, and it, and it doesn't have to be in the, in the mills here. It could be on the tobacco farms in the Eastern North Carolina. It could be whatever it was the industry at your, in your town at that time. But a lot of people get caught up and they're grateful for the jobs, but they get caught up there. And um, I read the book that weekend and I felt so bad because it had come out. And uh, I called and told him, I said, I just didn't, I just didn't get through the clutter in the office. And he said, well, they're doing an article in the paper this weekend. Can they call you? And I said, absolutely. And they called. And uh, I, I was in the article because I think it speaks of that generation and a lot of generations. And it was a good book. So I went to the book signing that he had. And I got this from him this fall. And it, look at it. It's a purple T-shirt. Now, put your thinking caps on if you've been following my work. I'm going to take the shirt and turn it around, and it says on here, Sheraton, Waikiki Beach, right here. He found it, but let me tell you how he found it, and this is what he wrote. I just think this is classic, <laughs> because if you've seen the story about my husband, my wonderful husband, left brain, trying to get the luggage to Hawaii, you can remember that we were trying to get that luggage to the Sheraton at Waikiki Beach. So Tim was walking uh, in Hawaii and saw, let me see, the Sheraton. You're, you mentioned Sheraton Waikiki and how much you like T-shirts. The Sheraton has changed ownership and closed until August 1st. I was on the boardwalk recently at on the big island of Hawaii and spotted this T-shirt about 200 feet in the distance. The lady wearing the shirt uh, said <laughs> that me buying the shirt from her was non-negotiable. Right there on the boardwalk, I pleaded to let's at least Indian wrestle for it, <laughs> which we did, and I have won the shirt for you. <laughs> My left shoulder still is still hurt, but it looks better. Actually, I found another one like it, but they're out of print now, and I thought of you. So if you have seen the story about Left Brain trying his best to get the luggage to the Sheraton at Waikiki Beach, no, I am proudly now the owner, because of Tim, of this purple shirt that has all the Sheratons at, uh, in Hawaii. You got a question, Patrick? Well, no, I don't, I don't have a question, but uh, I just wanted to um, some people have been sharing Lorenzo's website for the flag. Fantastic. It is heroicflags.com. Thank you. Whoever did that. Thank you. I just don't ever want to look like I'm just trying to sell, sell, sell all the time here. But um, this was a young man who was nice and polite and um, knew how to speak and tell why he was doing this instead of just like all of the rest of our kids probably went through that phase. So uh, that's great. And the money goes to causes that we should all be embracing, I think. Okay. So let me see if I can put this down and we will go on and we will give prizes. Now I have pulled up this left brain's grocery bag and you think, well, that's the same grocery bag she's had with all. But remember we had four grocery bags packed with tiny slips of paper to the top, even mashed them down. And now we have just a few in the bottom, the ones that came in last week and this week. So this first prize that I'm going to give away is your choice of my items. You can have um, a Left Brains baseball cap. Uh, you can have any of the DVDs. You can have the new book, uh, Don't Bungee Jump Naked and other important stuff. 
the audio book is not included in this. We'll have that one a little bit later. Right. Tony, aren't these, what, did you want to say something before yeah, I draw? I any of this, a CD or a DVD. A lot of people mm -hmm. still prefer a CD. There are nine titles and they may select one. Someone wanted them all last week after they won. <laughs> no. But no, we give them one. Okay. They get their choice. Choice of any CD or DVD or the book. The physical book, not the uh, audio. And do you remember or the time we gave away all nine and the books? It was a <clears throat> big thing, and the person never called never, for it. Never heard from that one. I so know it. So that's why, that's when we realized that a lot of times you're drawing, if you're drawing like last spring, they might not be watching that day. Right. So we so let these that go. should all be more recent since we've changed the bag yeah since you have a new bag and i may do that every month and start over because it gives you chances and if you win once you can certainly win again but you can't win on the same day because we had somebody enter 50 quote questions unquote yesterday and we could have pulled out all day and pulled her name out and i appreciate your interest but you can only win once on one a day. Win, one win, one prize per day. All right. Can I ask you something, Tony? Sure. Um, is everything out for Christmas? Yeah, everything is out. We're still, I'm getting lots of people asking. I know if you bought it on the 15th or 16th or 17th of December, you would expect you would have it by now. And I would too, but you don't. Um, in many cases, most of you probably do, but they are all in the mail. They were all mailed U.S. first class mail, which I do not have tracking numbers on those orders. Can you? If you ordered, if you ordered two books at one time or more than, if it, in other words, if your order weighs more than thirteen ounces, then it went priority mail, and then I will have a tracking number. Um, it doesn't really help because it just tells you where it's sitting if you don't have it yet. I had one lady who checked on her order from December seventh and. Last, this week and the next day she called to say it arrived so that was a month yeah. so i would say you know if you, i'm happy to check it and tell you when it went out if that helps you but it, it, they're they're all in the mail they're, okay they're all in the mail and we received a, a case of books that were mashed up and so funny that we just started laughing and couldn't i mean the books were even messed up and they're pretty thick books and uh, so if you yours arrives and there's been damaged or something, get in touch with Tony. Okay, Tony, is sure, that right? Of course. We don't want you to have a, a – but I haven't really had that problem. They seem to be – Just mine. Arriving, no, just that one that was shipped. That was yeah. different. But, no, I don't think people's orders are damaged, but they just are slow. <laughs> okay, that'll work. All right, let's give away some presents, okay, everybody? All right, here goes, and this is your choice of those items. I'm not looking – and watch this because they say, do you ever shake the bag? So we're going to shake the bag right here. And we, all right, this is a person right here. And this person up uh, there too. I'm going to shake it till one drops. Okay. And this is Nancy Riley. And she was listening yesterday on the pop-up. And she says, I'm having trouble hearing you. I know we've gotten, you got that fixed, didn't you, Patrick? Yes. Uh, sure. You came over and fiddled with it and said, now it's fixed. So I'm assuming it is. Nancy I'm gonna Riley. Give you a, I'm going to give you a microphone. Okay. We'll have you so loud they'll be screaming that you turn down. Okay. All right. That's one gift. And I'm going to now do another gift out of the same bag because we started over and we don't have to go way down. Although, can I say we don't encourage criticisms? So okay. let this be a rarity. <laughs> she didn't win because she said something. Order your audio book. All right, you got it. How about this lady? Melinda Collins. Melinda Collins. It doesn't say where. It says T-Y. That's thank you. That wouldn't be a state. I don't think so. So I put her down, and we'll do one more right now and get to the questions. And this one right here. Uh, you have won a prize, and your name is Brenda Deporter. D E little E capital P O O R T E R E. And she says, I just got on my computer. I wish I had seen earlier. Well, I do. <laughs> so, but you got on and you entered, and that's fine. Congratulations to you three. And we'll be giving more questions as the time goes on. Meantime, I'm going to start pulling out these questions that y'all asked. Jeannie, before yes. You, before you do that, someone has asked, How do you win? 
they aren't aware of that, how to okay. put their name in, so tell them that. Okay, if you, if you post on Facebook um, during the week, like when I finish this show, I'll thank all of you for coming. And if you go ahead and post a question or say anything, then then your name, we take, we run those off and we go with the paper cutter and we cut them off and then we put them into the bag. Um, then uh, during the pop-up, people do the same thing and we cut those off. I usually spend every Friday night cutting <laughs> with the paper cutter. Only in Asheville last week, the Nashville people, I mean, in Nashville did not have a paper cutter, but we got scissors and just cut a lot of little wrists. But it worked fine. Okay, and I see a lot of people in here. The title of the books, of my book, Oh, by Tim, is Say Goodbye, Wave at the Corner. Um, it's a good story. Okay, well, I got to reach back here because it's been a year. Turn left. It was, it's, it's, a, it's a double, the meaning is so good when you read the book and it says, um, hope this finds you well, seven, seven, slightly more than a year ago, able to publish my dad's writings, wave goodbye at the corner. The word goodbye is a double meaning. He wasn't going anywhere, but he was going to be in that mill a long time. And he thought he just had a summer job at age 14. And it was the way people had to get through the, that era. So. Um, very good. All right, let's go to some questions. Yes. Have you ever had a pet? What was it if you did? Oh, we had good pets. We had, when Beaver, our son Beaver, was growing up, we had um, dogs. I've got a couple of stories about those dogs on uh, the clips. One of them is the Christmas surprise. <laughs> we had, I found the best pet to get Beaver after a lot of trouble because I was on the road all the time. Left brain was feeding it and the left brain was really taking care of it. And um, you can, if you can get a good hermit crab, if you don't know what those are, you can get them at the North Carolina beaches and South Carolina beaches. Put your hermit crab in a little cage. You don't have much to do there. Then there was that time that y'all brought your frogs over here and left them in our house. I'm going to tell that whole story. I sometime. think you should. Well, not today because okay. we're going on with these questions. Remind me to tell them when y'all asked me to keep your hermit crabs and I turned it over to Jerry. I mean, hermit, not the hermit crabs, the frogs. But a hermit crab is a good gift. Other than that, I would not have a gift, um, excuse me, a pet now because left brain can't take care of it. And I am sincerely hoping to be back on the road traveling. <laughs> Patrick, are we, we going to make it back? What? We all, we well, you want me on the road traveling Absolutely. too. And then the poor dog gets, I have to take him to a nice veterinarian, I'm sure. But okay, here we go. Kathy LaRock. Do you ever watch your pop-ups after signing off? You say goodbye about, and then you keep going. Oh, I do that. That's so, we're from the South. That's what we do. Kathy, you say, yeah, I'll talk to you today. Well, I was going to tell you about what happens is the names are moving along. And I say to you after the pop-up, because the pop-ups don't last too long, but I'll tell you what's coming up and giving away some prizes and answering questions. And I'm looking at the names and I say, thank you. You know, this is, I think that's about what I had for the day. And then I look down and there's the name of one of y'all who writes every week. Or, or, or says, I'm from Luverne, Alabama, which is where my daddy grew up. Or says, I live in Jacksonville and I have a show in Jacksonville in two weeks, something like that. And so I could stop and I know I'm doing it and I continue to talk to them. And then I'll say, well, it's time to go. And then I'll look and I'll say, I was in your high school class. And I stopped because I don't want to be rude. We don't ever want to be rude. So I am a Graham, but guess what, Kathleen? Uh, I appreciate your asking, and I do realize that after I have signed off, I keep talking. I do that. Question? You know, that could also <clears throat> be a Southern thing, because if you ask Tony directions, she's going to tell you how to get there, another way you could have gotten there, and the way you should have gotten there. And when she went there the last time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then tell you, you don't need to go anywhere. I know. <laughs> Why are you going? I can do that for you. Okay, and here's a here's a, another question. I'm reaching in here, and we'll see what this one is. And this is from, and uh, okay, Sharon Langley. 
You said you wear a size 11 shoes. I wear a size 12. Do you have a funny story about buying shoes? Well, as you know, when you wear a larger size shoe, you can't just say, I think I'll run to the mall today and get some shoes for such and such occasion. They're just not easy to find. And um, size 11s, and then if I'm on stage, I'm trying to find good shoes like pull de soie or not. I mean, good looking. And I, and I used to wear heels all the time on the stage. So I was in a shop in a town. And what I do when I get to the hotel is I start walking around the town. They've got a flea market. I'm in. If I, and then sometimes I see on the wall, I see shoes lined up and there's signs that say, we can fit you. So I was in a little town in the South and I saw that and I said, well, let me go in and see. And I don't mean to make fun of it, but there was a teenager behind the counter. And I went up and said, do you have any seven, excuse me, size 11s? And she was chewing gum. I mean, it, you could, that became the focal point. Just chewing gum, chewing gum. And she said, yes, ma'am, we got, so they're in the back on the last row. Well, I knew that was going to probably be the case. And I went back and turned the corner. I'm going to hyperventilate just telling you about it. I could see in the distance a pair of black port evening shoes. It, it just had one because I didn't trust you that you would take two of them and run out of the shoe shop. So you have to get the shoe and then you find somebody and say, can you bring, do you have one for the left foot too? And <laughs> she says, yes, we do. And she brings you the shoes. And I, I tried them on and they fit. And this is the hypervent. I almost clutched that box of shoes to my chest and looked around like some other woman with your size shoe or mine was going to come out from behind somewhere and say, you give me those black size 11 port shoes. And I went back to the counter and I guess I was out of breath. And I put them down and said to this teenager who was still chomping, chomping on her gum, I said, what you want? for this pair of black porous wash shoes. And she turned the box around a couple of times and she said, $16. And I said, $16? And she said, okay, ma'am, calm down. How about 12? <laughs> you can't make it up. So buying, and Tony, do you remember the time we were in Phoenix? I do, I do. You want me to tell yeah, them Yeah, you tell them what happened. 1981, Jeannie took me to my first National Speakers Association convention. It was also the first week I'd ever been away from home for that long. And the kids were young and it was a wonderful trip. Uh, Jeannie, I think you forgot to take those black potus wash shoes with you. I did. And we got there and she said, go over to that mall and see if you can't find me some black potus wash shoes. And which, wasn't I going to be on stage? You were. Oh, you yeah. Were, you were, you were. Uh, um, something. Getting some award or something. Yeah. So you needed your shoes. And I didn't have any dressy black shoes either. So I went to, and I can, I wish I could remember. I wanted to say it was the personality shop or personals. It, it was a shoe store that used to carry every size in always. Yeah. <clears throat> so I went in and I asked for one pair of size 11 black photo shoes, which they had. And also my size, which at that time was a four and a half. <laughs> so the man looked at me very straight. <laughs> but I, we both got our shoes and uh, wore them for years. I remember you came back to him, slapped him down and said, you figure out which you wear and which ones yeah. I wear. Yeah. And also I, you got a much better deal because you got a lot more shoe than, than I did. That's uh, right. Same money. Oh, they we're going to go and complain about that again. They didn't charge accordingly. Anyway, no. Yes. Yeah, they usually existed. would charge me more and you less. Well, they should have. Okay. I was in the Miss North Carolina pageant with her. I just pulled this one out, y'all. The year she won. Is it any wonder she won? Oh, I thought she said we couldn't believe. Is it any wonder? Who are you? Sharon, what town were you? Sharon, got to type that in and tell us what town you were. Oh, this week I received uh, several good questions about pageants, um, about talent, um, about did you have to put a lot of money in your gowns, those kind of things. But since Jane Jenkins, her long is coming next weekend, and she was also in the pageant way after I was, but she was sure there and was Miss South Carolina, we're going to hold those pageant questions till next week. 
Thank you. And we're still waiting to hear from Sharon. Which town were you, Sharon? I was Miss Graham. Listen to this. Cheryl Lee Ann Burton Dash Elliot. Hello from Bundamba, Ipswich, Queensland, Australia. All right. My town is in lockdown again from a new strain of COVID-19. So I'm stuck at home from 6 p.m. till Friday night. That's Friday night until 6 p.m. Monday night. And that's why she's watching my show. And you know what, Cheryl Lee? We're with you. You got to keep smiling. And um, I wish I could say if we can keep a sense of humor that we can solve this problem, but we sure can help ourselves get through it. We're sort of in the same thing here. We're not locked down completely where I live. Everybody where you live is a different thing. But we uh, we couldn't have a crowd of 15 or 20 sitting out here on the porch um, laughing if I said something that might be funny. We just can't do that. But everybody, don't don't lose your sense of humor. We've got to keep going in this this situation. Okay, here comes another question. All right. See, I told you we were going to get in more questions this week. Okay. All right. Johnny Alexander. The Johnny is J. O-H-N-N-I-E. Will you please post a picture of Patrick and his wife? We love him and you from Weatherford, Texas. Do you have a picture of Leslie with you? Well, if I'd had just a little advance notice. I know that. <laughs> Pat, well, let me make sure that everybody understands. Nepotism is alive and well. Leslie, who teaches at Elon University, she also teaches a lot of um, yoga. She's really something else but she's in the School of Education at Elon, is Tony, who's run my office for 42 years. She's Tony's daughter, and they met at the youth program. Tony, you probably have a picture of Leslie. Send Patrick a picture. Oh, you, you better have a picture. We love Leslie. Leslie is super smart. So there you go. So I had an old desk in Left Brain's office that is just a real old desk. And so it needed to be, we needed to get rid of it. And then a friend of mine named Lynn's husband said, you want me to finish that desk for you? And, she, and I didn't say anything because I had gotten it from Tony. And so that made it Tony's desk. And so at that point, they brought it back yesterday. And that was going to be a big surprise. And in the meantime, Patrick saw the desk this morning and said, that's perfect desk for Robert. That's their son. So that's Tony's grandson. So as we stand right now, where's the desk going? Probably in Leslie's office. I pray in Leslie's <laughs> office. <laughs> I think, but it is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, there's Leslie. Can everybody yeah, see, that? see that? Why I'll not? I'll pull it up. She looks good in that. <laughs> Are you looking at yourself? Do do one where she's not standing on her head. Okay. <laughs> no, that's that's the yoga thing. Yo see yoga thing. Okay, but anyway, I think Leslie's going to use the desk. Not Tony's not getting it back because you said it fits in your office. And then he said, but it fits in Roberts. And we and he said, no, Leslie won't say that. Yeah, I think so. It's uh, it's uh, he it's gorgeous. Did a beautiful beautiful job on it. Yeah, he it's, it's he a, did. It's a good family piece to keep. Uh, Patrick, will you signal to me when you find the, the picture of Leslie that you want to show? What was wrong with that first one? We weren't live. I mean, this is all Oh, you got to go. Oh, but I can see it. So here is Jean Black from Anniston, Alabama. Do you ever, in your younger days, consider skydiving? <laughs> no. Skydiving. <laughs> it's like bungee jumping. If you see me coming down out of the sky, somebody pushed me. <laughs> so I called the police. I do remember Jeannie years and years and years ago, you spoke for a group in North Carolina and they had a little private plane and they were flying you from one town to the other. That's and right. It was Mark, uh, Rocky Mount. It was, uh, Hardy's, the company. Hardy's you know, hamburgers. Hardy's Hamburg, yeah. And I remember you saying that they, they invited you to the cockpit before they took off and said, would you like to us to show you, teach you how to take off? And your answer was no, because there is no way in the world I would ever, ever need to take off in this airplane. <laughs> no, by myself. You want to show me how to land it? Okay. <laughs> but don't, I don't need to know how to take off. Tony, well, we've been working together a long time. We were at the beach, and they wanted me to do this speech. And I told Left Brain, we'll be there a whole week. I won't leave. 
And darn if I didn't say, yes, y'all come to Myrtle Beach and pick me up. We went to Smith Mountain Lake or somewhere like that. And came back. Well, but, you know, left brain smile. I just want to give out a shout out. Speaking of flying, um, my good friend's father and father-in-law passed away recently. His oh, name was Hank that. Rogers. And Hank was a was a pilot. And he used to say that the second greatest thrill in the world is flying. The first is landing. Yeah, <laughs> he was right. Uh, yeah, I knew that he had passed away. I got a picture away. of Leslie if you want to see it. All right, here's Leslie. I think Patrick outdid himself. If you, if you I outkicked my coverage. I know. <laughs> you outkicked your coverage. You, did, you, put, you didn't leave it up there long enough. Somebody might have been picking up a sandwich. <laughs> see? And you wonder, where is she? Why didn't she come over here and sit? Well, she's got her own career, and she has three children, and one of them, of course, is in college. So, uh and I, we have a college student coming back to Elon today. My grandson, Gray, will be back at Elon today. And I have another one named Isley, who's from Branson, Missouri. She's not a grandchild. She's the goddaughter of Sherry Harris, who's on this board. And um, Keith, that did the desk, is on the way to the Greensboro Airport to pick up Isley. I mean, this is a, we just manipulate like this every day. Okay, here's another question, and we'll give away some prizes. And then I want you to sing today, Patrick. All right. Will you sing? Okay. This is a question from Betty, B-E-T-T-Y-E, -T -T -E, Locklear from Fort Worth, Fort Worth, Texas. What one food from your childhood that you wish you could eat again? I like the soft baby food carrots they were good <laughs> i don't know the, any food um y'all i hate to say it again i just like anything somebody else will fix for me because i'm not a cook at all but um from my childhood you know when i grew up there were no fast foods the big deal for us in graham north carolina was hoping that the presbyterian church got out in enough time that we could beat the Burlington crowd to the restaurant that everybody wanted to go to over here. And we would, and we would eat out on Sunday. You didn't have a microwave. You had to plan ahead and mother did. Um, did you have childhood food that you ate? If I liked it then I like it now. We used to always go to Morrison's cafeteria yeah. after church. Mm -hmm. And um, my eyes always outdid my dad's wallet. Yes, <laughs> you would do that. See, remember, uh, when I was growing up, I, it was the 50s. And so, but you had a couple of places. Um, Zach's Hot Dogs was big in Burlington then, but Graham people didn't come to Zach's. That was two miles away. That was a totally different territory. You're putting the microphone up to your mouth, Tony. Are you saying anything? Not right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're having a good time. Oh, we're getting to more questions. Here we go. Let me just see what y'all say. Okay. I hope I get to yours, whoever that is. Oh, y'all are going to love these guests that we've got coming up, and you will love Karen when she gets to come. Nancy Cable Montgomery. I know that Left Brain has gone on some of your speaking trips. What was his favorite? I'm from the great town of Elon, home of Elon University. Nancy Cable Montgomery, do y'all know her? Well, I don't know. Say hello if you see me at a game, if there are any games. Um, Left Brain didn't go on some of the speaking trips. Left Brain went on many of the speaking trips when I was trying to get started. And he used to say he went on the ones that were very good and he went on the ones that were very bad. For example, speaking in um, uh, on the beach at, in North Carolina at night to Rotary young people who were on a special retreat and then speaking at breakfast the next day in Richmond, Virginia meant that you got in the car the minute that one speech was over. And because I didn't think I would get either one of those speeches, then I got both of those speeches and left brain would drive me to those speeches while I slept in the back seat or the front seat. It's just what we did. And he loved to go places that he could, have time to stay. Tony, do you remember the time that I was going to Hawaii and I asked uh, Left Brain to go and he said he couldn't go because of some reason and um, the PTA. 
Then yeah. I asked two or three, and finally you said, I'll go. And we went on like Thursday and came back on well, Sunday or Monday. That was for a, a speaker's uh, yeah. mid-year meeting. They had it in Hawaii. And uh, it was great, but it was quick. It was, And that was when everybody swore that if they had a meeting in Hawaii, they would come. They didn't come. Uh, that was 2002. <laughs> uh, can you believe that? A while ago, she said it was the 1981 when we were in. See, someone asked. What my mother-in-law is Rain Man. Someone what? Here, yes. Someone asked what month I started working for you. It was April. May 1st, I thought it was uh, April. 1979. She's an excellent driver, an excellent driver. <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's been a long time. Okay. So uh, left brain. I want you to address this comment. Though. Oh, this oh I got to finish this one. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm this sorry. one is what left brain's dream and mine too was people were asking me to speak and we wanted to say what we will do is we'll go in the summer when he was not, he was a school principal and um, we will take a town like San Francisco or Boston or wherever the speech was and we would stay, maybe stay for two weeks or even a month and live there and get a little place and just see that area of the country. What we didn't realize was this thing hit us so fast and there were so many speeches. We never had those times, but he sure went a lot of times. And most of the times, if it was Hawaii or it was, uh, what's the place in um, Colorado Springs, the Broadmoor. I mean, places he could maybe take his golf clubs and uh, we just went, but then he was with me driving all night, except that one night in Charlottesville, Virginia. And then I was in Asheville for breakfast and you and Sherry Kirchens we, we drove thought me. It, we thought it was a three hour drive. We I didn't know. know it was an eight, eight hour, drive. hour drive. It was, I mean, I got out of the car and walked in and spoke. You haven't lived till you check into the Grove, what was called the Grove Park Inn in Asheville then. Uh, at 5.30 in the morning. I know. <laughs> and you're speaking at 8 or something oh, like that. Oh, that was a mistake. We were young. I would never book something that close now. Well, never. We, we you booked it. We what am I saying? I don't think we had a uh, being or something to tell us how far it was. <laughs> you know what? This reminds me because it's about um, Jerry, left brain. Uh, in that Charlottesville speech, I'm not going to tell you, you had relatives and we went by their house. That's right. But at the Charlottesville speech, the, the CEO, uh, whatever the top person was for that country, company was seated next to me and I was there to speak to their staff and his wife was on the other side and she could not have been lovelier. And she said to me, I think I can be a speaker. And I mean, how many times do we hear this? And I said, well, jump in. We need women's, a lot of women speakers and we need people that can tell a different story and all this. I'm trying to pump her up and all. And she said, but my question would be, I have to do so many things for my husband. What would I do? I'll never forget this question. What would I do if I had agreed to give a speech? And when my husband got up that morning, he said he needed me to do something there that day. And I couldn't go make the speech. And I remember I looked right at her and said, I don't even understand the question. <laughs> what are you talking about? What, sure, what were you going to say, Patrick? Well, I've lost it now. Let me see. I, there, I, just, I just got a kick out of this. Um, it's something somebody said. Yeah. Are you rolling it backwards? Yes. Now that's going to confuse people, Patrick. They can't see this. Oh. <laughs> this is not. Well, what computer. can people see? We're not on there. They their see computer. you. Okay. I'm seeing these names. Well, you just keep looking, and then I want you to get up and sing. Okay. Okay. All right. While well, you're not making a move because you're looking, I'm someone getting lives, another question. Someone wrote, and they live close to the Broadmoor. Yeah, we, we, that is a beautiful place. Um, well, two, two summers ago, the speakers convention was at in Denver. So Tony and her husband, Tom and left brain could not go cause he was sick. And, um, uh, I took gray, my grandson, Ryder, my grandson and Jack, your grandson. And we went out and went to Colorado Springs and we took, we did not stay at the Broadmoor. I no. priced it. Yes. <laughs> we, but we went and ate lunch. For three, and we for walked three, around. For three rooms, you, you and Tom, and then I had a room and the boys all had a room. $2,100 a night. Yeah, it was like, I said, no, it was we like will $700 not. $700 per room for 
for night. So we stayed and, down, but if you antlers, got, which was very nice, we loved the antlers, and we found that great those great places to eat. But and went to the Garden of the Gods. Oh, but so the beautiful. the kids were when they saw the Broadmoor, and we walked all around because I've spoken there so we, many times. We ate there. We shopped there. Remember, yep. they found all those golf shirts they liked. And oh then, yeah, I remember. And, but and, but we didn't pay the seven hundred dollars a night for room. Per room. room. <laughs> we, I we, remember the golf shop because I remember uh, Gray saying, "Nene, do you buy? Any, did you by any chance bring your credit card?" <laughs> right. <laughs> and unfortunately, they were having a sale. I know. I know. We just. I guess this is a without our guests coming. I <clears> guess <throat> we're just answering your questions and reliving some good times. You, you gonna play now? Sure. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, presenting in from Burlington, North Carolina, by way of Nashville and Auburn, Alabama. Would you welcome, please, Patrick Henry? Yay! Uh, this is a song I wrote about my small um, hometown, uh, small town in Alabama, Auburn, Alabama. I saw somebody had asked where are you from because I mentioned Morrison's Cafe cafeteria, mm -hmm. and a lot of people. Um, mentioned that they love Morrison's. So mm -hmm. I hadn't heard that, thought about that in a lot of years. Anyway, this is a song about my hometown. Well, drive throughs barbecues, pickup trucks, sea dues. Friday nights, friendly fights downtown for a cruise, loving in the backseat. Cut off jeans, bare feet, cold beer, steer clear, county sheriff on the beat. No cones, George Jones, catfish, styrofoam, buck knives, beehives, dogwoods, dirt roads, pine trees, plum jam, black labs, country ham, skeeter bites, fly kites, highland in the yes, ma'am. Baby, small town, but we ain't small time. Give a country boys, live in a country life. From Arkansas to Carolina. Yeah, we're keeping the country, y'all. That suits us fine. Town square, summer nights, watermelon, pillow fights, port swings, radio, softball, fireflies, skinny dipping, stone skipping, Hank Junior night, fishing, water skiing, day drinking, pick a brand sports, switching football, NASCAR, camping underneath the stars, t shirts, red dirt, sweet tea, and mason jars, hound dogs, goatees, John Deere, little league, swimming pools, Sunday school, slip and slide, hide and seek. Did I mention three-part harmony? Baby, small town, but we ain't small time. Country boys live in a country life. From Arkansas to Carolina. Yeah, we're keeping the country, y'all. It suits us fine. Fast boats, flat beds, fried chicken, frog legs, church on Sunday, work on Monday, cracker barrel, tool shed, southern living well, which is slow dancing, slow kissing, country feet, wipe your feet before you walk to mama's kitchen. We may be small town, but we ain't small time. Every country boys live in a country life, from Arkansas to Carolina. Yeah, we're keeping the country, y'all. That suits us fine. Yeah, we're keeping it country, y'all. That suits us fine. Woo! Yay, Patrick. Would you repeat that? <laughs> no. I don't know how you get all those words. I got to tell you, though, Morrison's was in Auburn. Morrison's Cafeteria was in yeah. Auburn. But when we were growing up, we were sent by the train we'd go to greensboro and get on the train and go down to auburn and they don't stop in auburn so you had to jump fast when you went through auburn and my sister and i we would spend two weeks in uh, i'm kidding about the jumping part they could do a light and get the train to stop and uh, spend two to three weeks in auburn with that grandparent and then we would go to luverne alabama and spend two to three weeks with those grandparents but we would meet at the k and w in Rock in Montgomery for years, we'd always meet them at the K and W and swap. And then when we were through in Luverne, we'd reverse it, meet back in the K and W, go to Auburn, get on the train, and come home. 
It was amazing. Your I thought y'all were just really, really your, interested your in that. Had their summer worked out real well. Oh, they had <laughs> mother and daddy had their summer. We thought they just couldn't stand to see us go. When we realized later, they were having a good time while we were gone. We need to talk about the new audio. Bro. Oh, okay. Well, Patrick, put that guitar up. So here's the problem. I'm not, technology is not my strength. And now we have the audio book that we've been selling. Oh, we need to give one of these away uh, after you give what your explanation. There's seven CDs in here and it's seven hours and 20 minutes. And uh, it's me reading my own book and ad-libbing a little bit. I will admit that. But um, now we have it ready to be downloaded that you can just download. It's $10 cheaper, 35 versus 25 and so forth. But when Patrick came over here to tell me how to download it, we found out that I could not do that. I did not know how to do that. I, I kept trying to follow the instructions. So we sent the, the uh, instructions to Linda Krim, I think, out in Missouri. We Sherry. sent it to Beaver. We yep, went to Sherry, Sherry Harris. And, we, and you said, can y'all do this? And of course they wrote back and said, sure, just follow the directions. But I said, but the problem is a lot of the people who follow me might be like I am. So can you, if somebody yes. wants to download it, I got it. Oh okay, yeah. Take okay. it, Patrick. So um, we're very excited. We've been working on this project a long time. Uh, it all started when Jenny wrote her wonderful book. Don't bungee, bun don't bungee jump naked and other important stuff. And people started saying, but I have a hard time seeing, or my mother has a hard time seeing. Can you do an audio book? A lot of you know the story that Jeannie and I started pricing out studios for her to go in and we decided we could do it ourselves. And we did. And so um, after many weeks in the closet recording this book, we came up with the audio book CDs that um, you can get at the link at the bottom of the screen. But now we're offering the audio book download. Now, we're not going through Audible or any of those platforms because, quite frankly, they just charge too much. Um, and we found a great company out of Nashville owned by um, our friends Danny and K.O., Dan, and K Dan Huff and K.O. And um, Dan created it, Dan Huff, and it's called Magic, M-A-J-I-I-K. And so I'm going to show you how to get on. So what I want you to do is to... If you go to G, um, Jeannie Robertson Schumer store, it's storegenierobertson.com and click on the audio book download. You're going to see three options there. Um, we're going to let you download a sample for free. So if you're on your phone, go to the sample that says sample for mo mobile device, click on the link. And what's going to happen is it's going to take you to the app store and you just download the app for magic, M-A-J-I-I-K. You can trust them. And so you set up an account and then, you, and then you basically have access to the sample. Then you, if you want to download the um, book, whole book to buy, you just go to this link here under purchase the complete audio book. Now, if you want to listen to this on your computer, you go to this link that says sample for computer and just f click on it, set up an account, follow the prompts. It's really simple. And, um, it's less expensive than the CDs because we're not um, dealing with a hard copy. We're not mailing it. We're not doing all that. And it should be very simple. If you have problems, feel free to email Tony and she'll send it to me and I will, I will help you out. Don't worry. Tony's not going to try to help you. So, um, so anyhow, um, give it a shot. Everything's secure. Um, Dan Huff and KO, they're, they're friends of ours. We trust them. They're a big company and they've taken a special interest in Jeannie and um, they've really helped us out. And you're going to love the platform. You're going to love you the You mean tell you why they took a special interest in us? I know why. Tell them. Well, one of their wives likes my stories <laughs> <laughs> and we appreciate it. Is that the same thing you were going to say? Absolutely. Dan's wife is a big fan and she's a wonderful woman. Well, so they they all understand this. You go to audio book download, but you said go to store. Okay, hold on. Okay. Don't confuse them. So what we're going to do, um, just go to Jeannie's Humor Store. You can either get to it through her website on the link Humor Store, or you can go to storegenierobertson.com. Once you're there, it's going to um, look like this, and you can buy all kinds of products, CDs, DVDs, hats, or the um, CD audiobook, but if you want the download, then go to audiobook 
download. And there is how you do it. It's the, on the, the banner at the top. I mean, it's, it goes across it, the top. It's on the banner at the top. And we'll be throwing this up quite a bit. So this isn't your only chance to learn this. Um, See, what I don't understand is you can go to JeannieRobertson.com. Mm -hmm. And then up in the corner, it says humor store That's and it. you can click. So then why do we also have reverse everything and say store he genie robertson.com that's a, that's our go ahead patrick there's more than one road to the store <laughs> and oh, so it's it, it, if you're used to going to genie's site go to genie's site upper right hand corner click on humor store it gets Good the answer, same place I'm just, well see this if you never have down many every time i want an app downloaded i call you and That's you right. come over, and if I say they can't hear, you say I'm on the way. And every time I tell you I want an app, you feed me. I know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Oh, Patrick, oh. Is, did you explain all this to everybody? Is I think this, do y'all have it's, it's just as blank pretty, as I am? No, it's, it, it's, it's user-friendly. Now, some of you, um, if you don't have a lot of experience downloading apps, it may be a bit confusing at first, but, um, you know, buy the CD. But if you want to download, just follow the prompts. It'll get you there, I promise. It's a great platform. Okay. Am I looking different to you today? Yes. <laughs> Last week you announced that you and Leslie were going on diets and you had started the day before and you had already lost eight pounds. Well, so. That's water, Patrick. You know that's just water if you lose. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> I don't care if it's pudding. Um, okay. So Leslie and I have committed to um, – losing some weight. Leslie really didn't need to, but I did. So she decided to join the cause. And so, um, we went on last Saturday and I've lost 11 and a half pounds. Now I realized for those of you who are getting ready to blow up the thread with, um, I realized a lot of that was water, but I had a lot of water. So, um, I'm on my way. Okay. Well, I can truthfully say that two or three times you've been over here this week and I have had things you could eat and you have refrained. I'm proud of you, Patrick. It wasn't a cheap diet. I know. <laughs> and but you used the word you ordered the diet. Yeah, it was a it was a um, You just cut calories. Well no. I mean a lot of You're paying I, for this? I am paying. Yes. Okay. You were talking about it earlier and you and I said Oh, um, somebody, Linda Wright just said, what if I want to use both computer and a phone? Great question. Thank you for asking that, Linda, for, for, for the audio book. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I'm backtracking. If you can, once you download this app, you can download to five devices. So if you want to look, listen to it on your computer, you're basically logging into the same platform, whether it's from your phone, computer, or iPad. So you can download it to, to up to five devices. And so like I've got it on my phone um, and I just open the app and and listen or if i log in on the computer once i've set up an account um i think it's called i diddy is 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 what you're gonna I diddy yeah but don't worry about it um click on that link it'll take you there and you'll you can access it from computer phone ipads and i get it on your iphone so you can click it into your car and listen to it while you drive my turn yes you look confused don't worry okay well i'm yeah I, the, my only thing is that these Somebody wrote this week and said, I was looking, trying to find it. And they said, they noticed that all the people in my um, audiences look like we're from another era. That we look, don't look young and hip. And so I, and they're talking about me too. And I know that I think we look real hip. I've looked at everybody in there. You were in an audience, Tony, but, um, but when you were talking a while ago, you used a phrase that I had not heard and it said um, something about cell fat, some kind of fat that you were losing the first day you lose what kind of fat you oh, get back to. What do you call that? It's on your diet. I don't know. Um, you know what? You're already weak. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. I'm trying to find that. I wish I would have seen. Can you imagine somebody saying it's just that they must be a very this young woman person. says, I wasn't fat. You were just flooded. <laughs> <I know. laughs> She's right. I, I have a question on the book. Back on that, uh, Patrick. Two, two things. Yep. Uh, someone said on here that they could order it, a Kindle version on, on, uh, you know, that is not, that's not the, the audio. audio. That is, a, there is a Kindle version on Amazon that is printed 
and we've had that since the beginning. That's a digital download of the book. Of the book. Yeah, if y'all want to get the book, um, just read. read it on your phone or your iPad, go to Kindle. You can get it there. Right. You can, the, if you, if we're talking about audio. That's been there. Then someone else said, well, when I lost my question because I'm like you, it went away. Um, oh, could they use Bluetooth to play it through their car? Yes. Okay, make sure they, you say that better. They know you can play it through Bluetooth in your car. Okay. <laughs> and I have Bluetooth in my car because you came over and set it up. And it, it does keep your hands on the wheel. Yeah, I don't have it in my car because I was supposed to have a new car by now, but a pandemic hit and took away my money. <laughs> That's your poor thing. All right, here's a question. Paige Merkinson, if you don't cook, Jeannie, who cooks for you? Left brain? Friends? Tony? <laughs> cooking is not necessary around here uh -uh. that we have good places that make wonderful little meals for us and we can put them in the freezer and then stick them in the oven um uh, genie uh we we i don't cook much either uh so it's we it's, just don't we, we where are we out, going to we, lunch we in a little while we do support our local restaurants with takeout a lot and uh, we have a few that we can go eat in. So. And they have a great Sunday night option. Oh, we do. Oh, and is that back on since you're eating grass or whatever? Yeah, I hope, hope y'all don't mind salads tomorrow night. <laughs> See, we've been eat. We eat, we're invited to the Henry's every Sunday night, and we social distance and all around. So it's just a very few. It's just the family. And um, now Patrick says he's on a diet, so don't come last Sunday. I, don't you remember he said, don't come. There'll right. be no food. Right. We had to actually feed ourselves on a Sunday night. I know. it. Um, well, how much time do we have? Because I want to give more prizes. Oh, away. Time you need to give away oh, no. I need to give away the um, how far past time. See, we didn't even have a gift. Okay. This is the one that has the seven DVDs and CDs in there. Uh, remember that they're not all the same length because you can't just stop in the middle of a story. And you got to go on, but this is the this is the big new item. So the winner, I'm going to reach in here and pull out the winner of this, and hope she see she or he still has a CD player. <laughs> we didn't get but a thousand of these. Okay, Terry T E R R I Ludwig Peters, and she says thank you so much. On her, that's what she wrote on here for something else. Terry Ludwig Peters, everyone who's had your name drawn for a prize, write Tony, T-O-N-I, at JeannieRobertson.com and tell her what you want, except for Terry. Terry, if you just absolutely don't have a CD player, she can send you some other stuff to make up. But um, you got a question? Isley is on her way. Okay, thanks, Sherry. She is so excited to see you all. Aren't you glad we don't discuss politics on this board? <laughs> I saw what you posted. You okay, back, Sherry. don't put the next thing she says <laughs> up, whatever it is. Um, Isley is on the way from the airport. That's great. Uh, I know you're a little behind, a little over, but you've only given away three regular prizes if you want to do it. I thought I'd given away. Let me give away four. And there's somebody else that just said, thank you. You made my week. This was a little discombobulated, but you know, y'all, sometimes I just don't get in. I don't get in enough questions and I'm aware of it. And y'all are telling me we need questions. And then they'll say, we need more songs. And then they'll say, we need more stories because I had a story I was going to tell today and see, here we are. I guess I talked too much. Here is the winner of a prize. Tell Tony what you want. Kim K I M holler H O L L A R Beverly. Or this got chopped off, and it's Kim Holler from Beverly Hills. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's Kim Beverly Holler. Are you win a prize? Let me let me give away another one. Thanks for letting us know. Isley's on the way. I love young college kids. They're so excited. They came back early because they knew others were coming back early. They've all before been give, tested before they go back. I know everybody. That, oh, they do. Before you give that prize, I wanted to say one thing. Uh, today. And there may be others, but right now we've had people watching in Kenya, Ireland, that's Ian, of course, Austria, Portugal, that's a lady named Ian. Ian. Um, Ian's from Scotland. Sri Lanka. Yeah, Sri Lanka? Scotland. I'm sorry. I said Ireland. I meant Scotland. Oh, uh, that may be a big 
um, distinction you need to make. Yeah, I think <laughs> Scotland. Yeah. Scotland. But Kenya, Scotland, and Australia, Austria, Portugal, and Sri Lanka. Also and Australia. New Jersey. So hey. And I bet Australia's here, but I, Australia. I don't, that I didn't. I'm see not. That I'm not sure that. New Jersey could understand us. No, it's my <laughs> accent. Okay, Gail Williams. No, this Gail G A I L. I think she's been on a lot. So let me give another one. I'm sorry, y'all. And the the story remind me to tell because I wanted to tell the story about. The basket. I was on Neil Steele's radio show yesterday again. We skipped Christmas and New Year's Day, and um, and told two stories I forgot that I had. So this is a stretch. Is this is stretching me to do this and Neil's show? But I was going to finish the story for y'all because one lady said her radio cut off and she missed the punchline on the basketball referee story. And then also the New Orleans story when I took the senior class. And people are asking, do I have any stories from when I taught? Yours truly taught nine years and spoke on the weekends. Okay. This is a person who cannot win. Ann Walker. This is, Ann, how many times did you put your name in? I posted in Sumter, South Carolina. I posted from we love Missy. Ann. Missy uh, Evans, that's Ann's daughter, Porch. Okay. Oh, yeah. Here's the winner. Thanks, Ann. Anyway, we love you, boo. Cheryl Fortune. C H E R Fortune. And one more after this. Y'all get in touch with Tony. C H E R Y L. Okay. Fortune. And then one more. One more. All right. Look at this. Is a lot of people winning that the odds are better. Okay. Here we are, right here. And the last winner of the day is Kay Jones, who says it's impossible to hear you. That was from the other night. I know it. We don't give Kay a prize. <laughs> well, she's not going to know she won if she's still going to hear us. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't hear us. No, that was a different assessment. You got it fixed, Patrick. That's what I probably won't give one. Hey, Patrick, thank you for helping me with logistics because I found that all very confusing. But then we sent it to three people, and even Beaver said, no problem. So if it's no problem to everybody else, it's going to be okay. Well, and some of you may have some issues, and we'll get you through them. It, it's, this is not a one-time deal. We'll be with you the whole way until you download it. Well, and we were working with real good people with that magic company with Dan and Yeah, Dan and Kay are great. And um, then next week, we'll see you here, and Jane Jenkins Herlong will be on the stage with – I mean, on the stage <laughs> – will be on the porch with us. And then two weeks after her, Shonda Pierce and Karen, we look forward to the rearranged date. And I'm glad you didn't try to come here on an icy road late yesterday. Thanks, y'all. Keep laughing. She's a heck of a lot of fun, Jeannie Robertson. Oh, she's a heck of a lot of fun, Jeannie Robertson.